So the reason we did this uh, model was because we wanted to get a head start on some benchmarking that we knew one of our clients was conducting. Okay, they wanted to assess some different codes um, against a store drop validation model and we thought that it would be beneficial if they could see uh, the use of overset in action. Um, so we conducted the overset simulation and, and compared the results so that we could present to them. I think overset is really helpful uh, because it requires a lot less kind of troubleshooting and trial and error from my personal experience. With overset you have a background mesh and a component mesh and then an in interface between the two but there's no actual remeshing that needs to take place so you use an overset mesh method when we have a moving component that we want to simulate in a transient manner. When we use dynamic mesh, we have to remesh constantly at every time step. With the overset method, we're just regenerating the interface. So the original mesh controls that we put in from the start stay the same. So we know that our mesh uh, independent study remains constant, our mesh quality remains constant, and as long as we can uh, avoid orphan cells, we're going to get a uh, really good kind of quality of mesh in the uh, quality of output in the simulation. Um, so yeah, in this case with the store dropping, we're, we're using a UDF to assign the mass of the store and the rotational inertias. We're also providing ejector forces, okay, so up until a certain point there's ejector forces on that store pushing it away from the, uh, from the wing itself and then from there it's all the aerodynamic forces that come into play that move the store. I think anybody with a little bit of maybe intermediate CFD background uh, would find it fairly simple to pick up uh, with a bit of guidance to, to use the overset meshing method.